Porpoising has dominated yet another race weekend in Azerbaijan, and once again, it's the Mercedes team that are the loudest complainers. Both of their cars looked awful to drive around the city streets of Baku, and Lewis Hamilton could barely walk after climbing out of his car at the end of the race. The teams have apparently already voted on changing the rules. Want to know the outcome? Then stick around to find out. It's just a matter of time before we see a major incident. A lot of us can barely keep the car in a straight line over these bumps, said George Russell over the weekend. The Mercedes car was all over the place, and TV coverage showed Lewis Hamilton nearly losing control of the car in turns 17, 18, and 19. The bouncing was so bad. It is the Mercedes team and Russell as the head of the Grand Prix Drivers Association who are leading the calls for changes to the rules, but their requests are falling on deaf ears at the moment. On Friday in Baku, he raised the prospect of rule changes in a Sky interview, saying, I don't think it's right to be able to run like this for the next four years or whatever we've got. Conversations are going to be needed because everybody's in the same boat, really. You can't disagree with what he is saying. There is no way the drivers are going to be able to continue like this. There's a long list of drivers who have been complaining about health problems from the bounce sink. Kevin Magnussen had nerve pain in his arm and jaw after Australia. Carlos Sainz said in Barcelona he was feeling the effect in his neck and back, and Gasly said the same after Baku. Ricardo said, while looking visibly sore in the post-race media pen, that Baku was his first time experiencing bad porpoising and that he feels very, very sorry for people that have been experiencing it all year, and he can't speak badly enough about it. He also made some interesting comments about how disorientating it seems to be. He was genuinely rattled, and his head felt like a basketball being dribbled. Ocon said after practice in Baku that it's just painful on the body really, I can't feel it on the neck. Schumacher said after having an engine issue due to porpoising in Baku that it's quite harsh on the body. It's obvious that conversations need to happen, but who do those conversations need to happen with? The Mercedes drivers and team seem to insist that the conversations need to happen with the FIA. They're set in their opinion that there is something in the rules that's causing this problem. But if the problem was with the rules, then wouldn't every team be bouncing as badly as Mercedes are? So why are some not? Remember that ground effect cars and porpoising have been around for decades now. They might not have been in F1 for a while, but race series elsewhere in the world do allow ground effect flaws. So they should have been expecting this to happen. For some like Mercedes, it's at a level where the drivers are starting to struggle physically. For others, like Ferrari, it's manageable, and Red Bull doesn't appear to have much of it at all. What they do have, they're coping with incredibly well. For all the others, it comes and goes depending on what amount of underbody downforce teams are willing to give up with the rear ride height they choose to run their car at. Porpoising doesn't simply come from the airflow stalling, it's from the outer sides of the floor, which are sealing the underfloor as well. How close the teams can get the edge of their floor to the ground makes a massive difference on how much downforce they can create. From 10mm away from the ground compared to 5mm away from the ground, the underbody downforce probably doubles. From 5mm from the ground to touching, the underbody downforce probably quadruples. So the closer to the ground you can run the car, the happier you are. That has always been the case in F1, but now we have ground effect floors, it's even truer. On a bumpy track like Baku, the distance between your floor and the track is constantly changing, and so is your downforce. This is a problem for Mercedes as their car seems unable to cope with this and ends up doing the kind of high-frequency, aggressive porpoising that we saw down the pit straight. For Red Bull though, the combination of their sophisticated suspension setup, which looks to be the best on the grid for controlling the ride quality, and their floor, which is better designed than Mercedes, means that they're able to limit the severity of their bouncing to a completely copable level. Because of the range of severity across the teams, not everyone is as outraged as the Mercedes drivers are. Lando Norris said after Baku that he has some porpoising, but it's something you have to deal with. And that, I don't think it's anything to complain about, people just need to find ways of fixing it themselves. He also said, We have some porpoising, some bouncing, but it is what you have to deal with. It's the trade of trying to gain performance, and we can quite easily go lower and gain more performance, but have more porpoising. But we just think where we are at the moment is the correct amount. I'm sure the Mercedes could have a much stiffer floor and raise the ride height, and it would be much nicer for them, but they obviously don't want to lose their performance. So, um... I don't think it's anything to complain about. People just need to find ways of fixing it themselves. This point by Lando Norris is the same point that pretty much everyone is making. Mercedes problems are their own. They have a choice. They can raise their ride height and lose some performance but save their drivers. 
Mercedes are making the choice to put their driver's health at risk in exchange for more performance. If George Russell thinks there should be a conversation, then he needs to be having it with his team and asking why they're risking his health in exchange for performance. Christian Horner has actually said that he thinks some teams are exaggerating their concerns in an attempt to get rules changes. Horner claimed others are pushing the safety angle to prompt a reaction from the FIA. He said he would tell his drivers to do the same thing if they were in the same position as some of their rivals. I'd tell them to bitch as much as they could over the radio and make as big an issue out of it as they possibly could, said Horner in response to a question from race fans. It's part of the game. It's like somebody diving in a penalty box. Asked whether he believes this is what some teams are doing, Horner replied, of course it is. He said that the teams who have problems with porpoising could solve it by raising their ride height, although doing that would make their cars slower. You can see it's uncomfortable, he conceded. There are remedies to that, but it is a detriment of the car's performance. So what the easiest thing to do is to complain from a safety point of view. But each team has a choice. This is such an interesting problem for F1. It is likely that there are long-term safety concerns over the effects of porpoising. Not just on drivers' backs and necks, but on their brains as well. But the teams don't want to sacrifice performance to stop the bouncing because of the competitive aspect of the sport and how much money is at stake. They also know that looking for mechanical and aerodynamic fixes to the problem will cost money that's limited due to the new budget cap. So at the moment, they're complaining to the FIA from that safety standpoint to get a rules change that they can then use to implement a fix without sacrificing performance. If you're a team like Mercedes, who have won the constructors' title eight years in a row and the drivers' title in seven of those years, you don't want to be fighting in the midfield. They could raise the ride height to save Lewis Hamilton and George Russell's health, but they would lose performance and leave themselves vulnerable to being caught by the teams behind them. That would hurt Toto Wolff's ego far too much. So instead, they're hurting their drivers in an attempt to get the rules changed. Doesn't that sound like something the Grand Prix Drivers Association should be addressing? The same association that George Russell, Mercedes driver, is head of. Hmm. It emerged in Baku that last year, during discussions about the progress of the 2022 cars, a proposal was put forward to counter concerns about the risk of porpoising. It is understood that as it became clear how low teams were going to have to run the 2022 generation of cars, the idea of introducing something to eradicate the risk of bouncing was discussed. But the proposal, believed to involve a series of technical measures that would have effectively mandated a minimum ride height to lift cars clear from being at risk of porpoising, did not have the necessary support so was binned. The teams might be more open to a change like that now, but they have left it too late. It's now June, and that means that 8 of the 10 teams are now required to make direct changes or amendments to the 2023 regulations. The chances of that happening are nil, as all teams have their own interests. You can guarantee the Red Bull and Alpha Tauri wouldn't vote for a change, as they lead the championship and wouldn't want to help their rivals Mercedes and Ferrari. That means only one other team would have to vote against changes, and you can pretty much take your pick of the midfield to find a team who would vote no. This conversation isn't going to go away anytime soon, unfortunately. A driver is going to end up with long-term health concerns or a crash is going to happen because of it. And when that does happen, it will have been 100% preventable and 100% the fault of the team that didn't change their car to solve the problem. That's the bottom line. And at some point, Mercedes are going to have to wake up to the facts and stop risking the health and lives of their drivers. Would you be knocking on Toto's door, telling him to raise your ride height? or going to the media to get the FIA to try and make changes. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Until we see you next time, drive safe and bye-bye.